It is 19 hours 47 in Guyana and right across the Eastern Caribbean. Welcome back to another edition of Room 592, where we unleash the truth. And of course, joining us this evening is Dr. Yog Mahadio, Senior Journalist Leonard Gildari, Attorney at Law, Mr. Timothy Jonas, and President of the GCCI, Mr. Nicholas Boyer, and the Chairman of the Private Sector Commission, Captain Jerry Gavaya. Gentlemen, good evening to you. everyone in this country. Tonight we have Captain Jerry Gavaya, we have Mr. Nicholas Boyer, and we have Mr. Timothy Jonas, who have been invited here, not necessarily as president of the, of the Private Sector Commission and the Jarsham Chamber of Commerce, or as the chairman of ANAG. But we have invited Mr. Gavaya and Mr. Boyer as lead of their observer teams for this last 33 days, and Mr. Timothy Jonas, as an attorney at law, as we look at Low and Fields reports, what's contained therein, and what does it bode? How, how, how does it place Guyana going into this new week? Ladies and gentlemen, before I hand you over to, our, to Mr. Jerry Gavaya, who I'm going to ask to make the opening comment, I want to share this with all of you. Five years ago, five years ago, David Granger said of Donald Ramatar, David Granger said, the president is sleepwalking into a constitutional nightmare. I want to say, knowing Granger five years later, he was probably talking about himself because he has walked himself and walked this country into one constitutional nightmare after the other. From 2018 to now, we have had every kind of nonsense thrown at us as a country. We have had Patterson thrown in our face as chairman of GCOM. We have had over and over his disagreement with the chief justice, the, the no confidence motion. Patterson came, Patterson employed Lowenfield, Patterson employed Myers, Patterson set up the commission well. And today, this is the result of all of that sleepwalking this nation into constitutional nightmare one after the other. Allegations, anomalies, irregularities, you name it, Stabrook News debunked, publicly debunked those death certificates that they were placing on their walls. You go check Stabrook News. Kaitu News debunked, publicly debunked all those claims about migrants voting. 
Yet, Lowenfield used the allegations in his report to make a conclusion based on an allegation. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, Lowenfield has not conducted an investigation. Lowenfield had those five days. He did not write to the police commissioner. He did not write to anyone for evidence. He listened to allegations and he wrote a report being judge, jury, and he wants to be the executioner for elections 2020. So today we need to an analyze this a little bit more. What has Mr. Lowenfield done? And Lowenfield has now put Mingo to rest. Now you have a bigger one, and that is Mr. Keith Lowenfield. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about this Lowenfield's report. What are the implications? And this week, I promise you, this coming week, starting tonight, tomorrow night and onwards, we are going to hit every nail. We are going to tack on to everything that has happened and that will be happening to ensure that you form part of the truth brigade because those in government obviously have divorced themselves from truth. Mr. Jerry Gavaya, I'm sorry, but at this stage, sir, you are the, the head of a, a business uh, organization, private sector commission. Um, my, my comments may not be to your uh, liking because my comments may place you in a particular position because as a businessman, you may want to, to ensure that your, your, your perspectives are, are well-centered. Nevertheless, they are what they are, sir, as an independent uh, um, a commentator, as a social commentator, those are my views. Without prejudice, Captain Jerry Gavaya, your thoughts on where we are with Keith Lowenfield's report, sir. Muted. Volume, you're muted. Um, Captain, you're muted. Say, yes. I was saying that Keith Lowenfield report was the most atrocious um, and ridiculous bunch of lies and untruths I've ever seen. But I want to say this to you, Yog, that you know, there's actually a book written by a scholar, I think his name is Eric um, Cheeseman, and it's called How to Rig an Election and, and Not Get Caught. And you know, why people rig an election, and there's a, actually, there's actually a science, it seems like, to rig elections because countries and governments need to have legitimacy. And so <laughs> this, this scholar had studied the, um, the methodology of rigging elections all over the world. And um, I actually saw, I sat the other day and looked at a presentation by this, uh, this intellectual. And speaking about Guys, I think somebody, you, need to, you, need to, you need to mute your microphones. Yeah. Somebody has. Yeah. Sorry about that, viewers and listeners. Yes, Captain. Yes. Uh, but somebody on your side, I think they need to mute their microphone. It's coming through very loud on my side. Um, anyway, uh, Nicholas, I think you need to mute your and uh, um, somebody else. Anyway, that's fine. But um, I was making the point, Yog, that you need legitimacy. Guyana cannot stand alone as a country. We can't stand alone financially, um, and we certainly can't stand alone from a position of national security. And I just want to make this point before we go further. You know, I was on a program yesterday where we were discussing the issue with Venezuela. Um, and um, Director General uh, um, um, Carl Greenwich actually was, he did a wonderful presentation on the dilemma we face with Venezuela and what is happening before the World Court. And I made the point to them that if we do not understand that Guyana will never, ever, not in the next two or three decades, be ever ready in a position to confront an assault by Venezuela or aggression by Venezuela, military to military. Our greatest strength is in our Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where we have to keep our linkages with our bilateral um, and, and regional organizations, CARICOM, OAS, Commonwealth Secretariat, United States, Canada, the UK, Brazil. 
And those relationships are based on a, on a government being legitimate. So you need legitimacy. You need legitimacy for international aid. You need, inter, you need for, for, for financial assistance for development. Um, and for anybody to attempt to steal the elections in the way we saw it happen on March 3rd and 4th and 5th, um, it is the most childish and foolish attempt to rig an election so transparently in front of the whole world, in front of every streaming camera, in front of every international ambassador in the Western world, um, in, including the Indian ambassador who was there. So the point I'm making is, and then you look at this Loing Field fiasco, what Loing Field is attempting to do. I mean, what Loing Field is doing is making um, Mingo look like a saint. What Loing Field just did with this report or what he's attempting to do, it is so, it is so atrocious um, that he's attempting to disenfranchise 285,000 Guyanese that voted, that took the mm -hmm. time to vote in election day. An election yoke that we observe. I was the leader, I was the head of the local observer team that we had approximately 600 or 700 Guyanese deployed all over Guyana. And then there was another 250 um, foreign observers from every corner of the globe, from the Commonwealth Secretary, the OAS, the European Union, CARICOM, and every single one of them, you, without exception, including the chairman of, 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 of GCOM, including David Granger himself, that pronounced on the, on the quality of the elections afterwards, how credible it was fair, it was free, it was transparent, and it was credible. And we spent, I, I am saying 8 billion. Somebody told me today it was more like $15 billion that we spent. And to hear Loing Field, who was the CEO, then tell the nation that he took our $15 billion and flushed it down a toilet because he presided over the most incompetent election in the history of Guyana. And he's thrown, not only himself, but he's thrown all of the GCOM staff all of the GCOM staff under the bus for their level of income, if what he's saying is true, for their level of incompetence and stupidity and childish, foolish juvenile behavior, that they were sitting there and allow dead people to vote and allow migrants to vote. Um, Yog, mm -hmm. I am sickened that our country could be held and hijacked at a ransom like this. And there are so many people who are prepared to defend this atrocity. Well, Jerry, um, I'm going to come back to you just now because one of the other things we need to do is, is to assess, analyze David Granger's statements that he would have made most recently. And based on the, you know, when you read between the lines, they just don't care about what others think and, and all of this, you know, whatever threats there may be, whether it's sanctions, whether it's expulsion from international communities. At this stage, at least they're showing that they just don't care whether it's a sanctimonious side that is being played up or not. It's, it's something we have to assess. Nick, if the government says you are a businessman, you head a business entity, you have, also, uh, you have also been observing this recount. If a government said they care not about what anybody else thinks about them, they care not for expulsion, they don't care any... What goes through your mind, sir? That's, you know, it's a very scary thought because everything, the modern business environment depends on countries having relationships with each, other, with each other, right? Just take the financial system. Our ability to trade with other nations depends on a financial system that is interlinked with the U.S. and then to the rest of the world. If you want mm -hmm. to send a payment to anybody else outside of Borders, Guyana, you're more than likely paying a bank locally here with cash. That bank is transferring that uh, amount is, or is crediting and debiting an amount in its corresponding bank in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And then that U.S. bank is debiting and crediting a corresponding bank somewhere else in the world. Just, just starting with there, you know, because you could see how much havoc would have been wrecked on our financial system with right. EMF. Now, when you start to go, let you know, we, in January to March, the amount of interest 
it was shown from foreign direct investors who want to place capital here, who want to create jobs for all Guyanese of all ethnicities across the country in varying product projects, you know, was tremendous. But mm -hmm. this elections process, I have met with a number of them and they all were kind of telling me, well, you know, we'll hold off on investing in Ghana. We'll look at it a little bit later. There are other countries competing for capital. So mm -hmm. if we decide to go the route that we want to go and be isolated, you know, this is something, Captain, a lot of people of a certain age can tell us we've been down this route. I've heard stories about the Elastic 15 and when it was hard to trade with other nations because we had foreign exchange controls in place mm -hmm. and you had to get licenses to import almost everything because you were trying to control the amount of foreign exchange that was being used. So we've yeah. tried this before but, and it ended but, badly. But, but Nick, here is, here is another, another challenge to your point there. The government obviously feels they got a lot of oil and, and they have this false notion that all of that oil wealth will be available to them. Granger said, today or yesterday, whenever he said it, that he is running on, on what? Um, uh, not empty, but, but running low um, in terms of finances. And, and, you know, nobody there asked him, who put us here? Who eat up all of the money, all of the reserves, all the gold and foreign reserves that we had in 2015? Who did it, Mr. Granger? So, so Nick, is it that these people think that, that you have reserves and you, you're still going to get some gold out of the bushes and you get the oil and so we don't need anybody else? But, but, but you see, the thing is, you, all of that relies on external partners. Our, Thank Canada you. is our biggest trading partner because we export a lot of gold here, raw, to Canada for further processing, right? We will be exporting our oil to other partners, to refiners mm -hmm. across the world. So we, so being part of the international community in this day and age is important. If look at Venezuela, Venezuela has confirmed 300, 300 billion barrels. Put in perspective, we have eight. They have 300 billion barrels of proven reserves of oil and they don't mm -hmm. have medicines on the shelves and we have venezuelan migrants coming from caracas to here because they feel that here will be better thank you so tim i want to come to you because we need to get back to the consequences well not consequences the, the, this low um low and fields reporting and the early assertions i made that Low and field took uh, anomalies and took uh, allegations and made a conclusion with it. Over to you, Mr. Attorney at Law. Well, the, the order by GCOM contemplated that Mingo was to do two things. He was to tabulate the recount, the statement of recount. Um, it's a mathematical procedure. There's no discretion there. You add it up, which he did. And um, his tabulation showed what I think the whole country has known since March, that um, the PPP has won the elections by about 6,000 votes and is about 15,000 votes ahead of APNO. So there's absolutely no doubt on the statement of recount who the winner of the election is, who got the most votes. The second thing that Flo and Field was required to do under the order was to give a summary of the observation statement. Now, a summary is a condensation. It is an abridgment of, you make something more concise. You don't change it, you don't comment on it, you don't give your opinion as to its quality, you don't add to it, you make it smaller than it is. That's what the summary is. Mm -hmm. So what Mr. Lewinfield should have done is he should have abridged it, he should have informed it these many comments were made, a total of this many um, allegations were made involving a total of this many alleged dead people and this many alleged. He didn't do any of that. <clears throat> what he did is he took it on himself to consult with what other source of, sources of information he decided externally 
the GCOMS record. He then took it upon himself to decide on the veracity of those sources of information. And then he took it on himself to pronounce on whether he thought the elections, not even the recount, not even the ballot, but the entire election was credible because of anonymous information. He doesn't say what the information is, um, who he spoke to, where it came from, how it was stored, if he confirmed it. But this anonymous information that came to him led him to the conclusion that the bare and unsubstantiated allegations made by APNU rep during the recall process um, had merit. And therefore, he used the ridiculous expression, um, allow me to find it, Joe, because I, <laughs> I was so taken aback by it. It's the expression of a man who does not have the courage of his convictions, but is still trying to give a rabbit hole open to run out of. He concludes, and again, it's not his place to conclude to form any opinion, to summarize. But he concludes, and his last sentence for each of the regions was, on the basis of the votes counted and the information furnished from the recall, and this is what's important, it cannot be ascertained that the results meet the standard of fair and credible election. Now, it would be difficult to conceive a more ambiguous, useless non statement than that. He is saying, on the basis of information, he cannot ascertain something. Mm. So he, he should have stayed silent. For him mm -hmm. to say he cannot ascertain that it meets the standard of fair and credible, he's absolutely correct. It's true, because the information that he has does not allow <laughs> him to reach any conclusion. He could equally have said it cannot be ascertained that it does not meet the standard right. of a fair and reasonable election. But what he's trying to do with his lack of information, the absence of identifying the source of that information, is he's tried to create an impression that leads in one direction. But really, he's not saying anything at all. So he should not have given a, an opinion. He should not have drawn a conclusion. He should not have tried to go to find some outside sources of information beyond the records of GCOM. He should have summarized the information that was in the statement of, of um, observation. And he should have said whether or not there was any evidence given by APNU, as they promised they would give. He would have to say no evidence was given, because none has been given. And that's where he should have left it. But instead, he's drawn threads to try to create an impression which is entirely wrong. And mm -hmm. I, it's easy to see through. The chair is a legal brain, and I have no doubt she will see through it. So it is really for her now to do the right thing, reject it, and move on to the next stage. Right. But Tim, let me, let me push back at you for, at, um, on one point. So Lobenfield has, has offered a, 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 you know, um, a conclusion that wasn't, ex, uh, wasn't required of him, on a welcome conclusion that none, none of the regions, not a single region in his mind met. So he is basically concluded he did not do a good job. He is basically concluded that he failed and failed miserably. And if, Tim, if the chairman was to even contemplate this report, shouldn't the next order of business be to jail Mr. Lowenfield? Because here is a man who admit to having a nine billion dollars budget, to and, and this is what he has done with it. Well, Yoga, I think you've jumped far there. I don't know that you jail somebody <laughs> for not doing a good job. Um, if that were the case, we'd have a lot of problems. Well, but, it's fraud, isn't it? <laughs> no, well, you didn't say that. You said for not doing a good job. <laughs> um, but I think that some conclusions can be drawn from this pretended report that Mr. Lowenfield has tried to put in. Um, he is trying to achieve the impossible. You see, a question we have to ask is, given this new approach by APNU with the complicity of GCOM, that the elections were bad, all the GCOM employees um, were fraudulent, all the APNU observers were fraudulent, all the PPP observers were fraudulent, everybody was fraudulent. And by being fraudulent, they managed to skim six or maybe seven votes in each of 2,000 places of food, because that, that is the story. That is what mm -hmm. they're trying to be told. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If that is the case, then where do we go from here? They Correct. say a new election. But who does the new election? The same and, G that and when 
completely, completely compromised in every single place of poll, each of its several hundred officers. Um, is it run by G by Mingo? Is it run by Lowenfield? The same people who supervise and oversaw this entire colossal um, corruption of a process. Who pays for it when it's done? Who's the interim government? You see, they're trying to achieve the impossible. It cannot. It cannot happen. And right. this is this is why I am so taken aback that this is trying to be peddled as some kind of plausible approach. Not just that we lied to you once when we told you we won. The whole country knows we lied to you. Or your own most ardent supporters know that you were lied. Your leaders lied to you. Your leaders said they won and on, did not show their SOPs. And here on these statements of recount, they lied. There's no getting around that. And yet, you are willing to believe them a second time when they see, say to you that in each of 2,000 places of poll, PPP stole six votes or seven votes so that they can manipulate a total of 20,000 votes. I mean, that plan mm -hmm. is so alien. It is, it is so amazing that this is what's being sold. So that the party that lied to you, you are willing to believe this of that party and that the entire GCOM staff and the entire APNU representative there were all compromised by this process. That's what they're trying to believe. Correct. Well, in addition to that, I just want to share this with viewers and listeners. By saying what, what Lowenfield said, it means the following, among many things. Headmistresses, headmasters, school teachers, public servants, you are the people who have been manning these polling boats and polling stations. You were the polling clerks. You were returning officers. You were the persons that GCOM employed. And today GCOM has said you were all fraudulent in the conduct of your duty. Ladies and gentlemen, I called on all POs and, and, and polling clerks and re returning officers all across this country. If you never had a cause to speak up, now is the time because Lowenfield has called all of you dishonest, has said you have all created a fraudulent election. Headmasters, headmistresses, all of you, school teachers that were involved in these elections. Today, all of the women that were there, Mr. Lowenfield has insulted all of you. All of the men that were there, Mr. Lowenfield has called all of you thieves. You forgot one this group. This is though. what? Yes, go on. You forgot one group. The APNU representatives who were present in each of those places, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to call on this country. I repeat, rise up, speak out. When a list was sent from the police commission of police to GCOM, it is citizens that spoke out that showed that that list was a lie. When Mr. Watts, his name, start posting death certificates on this wall, on his wall, it is citizens like you that stood up and speak out. Please speak up. Don't allow yourselves to be called thieves and fraudsters by Mr. Lowenfield. Stand up for your name and your family name because, Captain, I want to come to you at the end of this election. Well, not at the end. I want to ask for a list of all the agents and all the returning officers and all of the, the clerks and everybody. I want to know who these people are that were in every, uh, every polling station that put us in this spot, according to Mr. Lowenfield. And that we have to publicize and make sure, name and shame those who have put us where we are. Jerry, I want to come to you as, as a person who was dealt with head of many, many organizations, Captain Gavaya. Mr. Granger, in my own humble view, in his most recent press, press uh, meeting, he said some words that I believe is tantamount to pushing the GCOM chairman in a particular direction. It seems like Mr. Granger has reached the place in his mind where this election must be annulled so that he could enjoy, he and his cohorts 
could enjoy a good life while the rest of us can, can, can be under Lowenfield's spell. Mr. Gavaya, you have been an observer of these elections. You have also been a staunch supporter of Madam Claudette Singh. Sir, speak now. Let me hear of your opinion of what the chairman will do in the next 24 to 48 hours. The right thing. She will do the right and legal thing. Um, and what seems to be unfortunate, Yog, is that every person that spoke out on the side of the rule of law, that spoke out on the side of democracy, on the side of what is right, have come in for blistering personal attacks by um, agents, of, unfortunately, of the APNU. Um, and very shortly, very shortly, I imagine that, because um, I don't see how the CARICOM um, report could be anything short of, um, of a pronouncement on what is legal and right. And I certainly can't see the chairperson of GCOM doing anything else. She's an officer of the court. And she, got, she has no, no other option other than to follow the rule of law. And if what we've seen in the last uh, two or three weeks um, happened, then we could see an avalanche of personal attacks also coming on you, on me. I see, I see a lot of attacks on Tim. Um, I could not believe that somehow people said Tim was racial <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and so on. But I expect that the chairperson of, of GCOM will continue to do the right thing. And I want to remind people, I want to remind people that Claudette Singh, ex, uh, uh, former Justice Claudette Singh, is an officer of the court. And she, very, very early, on, like, on the 4th of March, she did say she was going to do a recount. And she kept her word. And she kept her word, Yog. And when we went into that convention center, the private sector, the local observers went there every day. In all 10 and then all 12 of the, of the, of the stations, we had representatives every day from 7.30 in the morning to 7.30 at night. And it was the most efficient, well-run, transparent, Every ballot that came out of that box went on went under blue light that, to authenticate that the ballot was was for real and there was no there were no bogus ballots and there was no box there was no box that was open where all these allegations that you had more votes in the box that was on an OLE that is a lie every single box met the criteria of transparency and credibility all of the all of the boxes every single one of them. Um, there was no box that had more votes than on the OLE. There was no stuffing in all boxes. And, Yog, I want yeah. to say that the reason why the chairperson of GCOM will rule correctly is because she, like me, like many other people, like all of the international community, every single person in the international community and all the observers, we all know this, that the Guyana elections, it's impossible for any political party, any political party to interfere or tamper with the electoral system. And I want to come to that. It's impossible for any person to vote twice. It's impossible for anybody to vote for somebody else, particularly because of the checks and balances in the polling station. And so the only way any political party could interfere in the process is by having agents of your party embedded in GCOM. And then you also have to now be able to corrupt all of the other party agents. And as far as I know, we had in every station, we had APNU and TPP agents. And then we had agents of the smaller parties and we had five members of GCOM staff. So mm -hmm. there is no way that what Lowenfield is contemplating and trying to propose is even remotely close to the truth. So the justice thing will rule on the side of the, of the law. God bless you, Captain, for your faith. But here is what the Guyanese people are seeing, sir. Here is what Guyanese people are seeing. Guyanese people are seeing that it's the same chairman that was there when Mingo was allowed to make the second declaration. Guyanese are seeing that the same chairman is there knowing that Lowenfield used Mingo's uh, numbers to make a report to the GCOM 
to the commission, the same chairman has seen and watched low and well, watched or not watched, low and field and operation for the past 30 odd days. The same chairperson, knowing the three of her commissioners are absolutely pro up, no three is absolutely pro PPP, knowing the vote is going to be left to her has been most reluctant to face the press, has been most reluctant to make decisions. That same chairperson you're asking the nation, and I, I, I'm not being negative, but you want us to continue to support and wait for that decision, sir. Let me tell you, and I think, I think you are being a little hard on her because of this. Let me take you back to when Dr. Serge Bali became the chairman of GCOM. He had three years or four years, he was put in GCOM and he had four years to prepare for the 2006 elections. Four years. Claudette Singh had four months or five months or six months. Claudette Singh um, was, was uh, inserted into GCOM at, in the middle of a quad mile, in the middle of a corrupted system uh, a system that was that was confused by the, the but, presence but of captain Patterson. captain as chairman of as chairman of private sector commission you and me you and i didn't agree on many things but what we do we come out we speak to the stakeholders we share we discuss and we educate yo yo she was learning she was understanding the system the gcom system was like a hornet's nest for her and she was learning and she was being very careful because Listen, you do have two major political forces in there. One of them controlled 217,000 Guyanese um, um, loyalty, and the other one have 237,000. And so the point is that she was always trying to walk that narrow ground. And I know it is hard for people, but I, wanna, I will continue to give her the benefit of the doubt. She but came in, and she'd been making some decisions. We don't always agree with everything she does. But you know what? She brought us to a point where we are now. It's been long, it's been tedious, but I think she'll make the right decision. Well, let me say well, this. I want to ask you Hold, 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 hold Leonard. Captain, let me say this to you. Mr. Gildari and I have been on radio every day as long as these elections have been. And if it's one thing, I want to remind this population and to remind the chairman if these words get to her ears that we have stood by her. We have stood and we have always said that ultimately the chairman will do the right thing. My only concern, uh, uh, Captain, is at what cost to this nation? Because yesterday for Mr. Granger, or was it today to say the things he said, and Tim, I'm gonna throw this at you uh, after, after Leonard Gildari, because Mr. Granger has basically in my mind alluded to a number of things. And one possibility is that whatever, as long as it is not an up no win, they're not prepared to accept these results. And I want to ask you about that, but over to Mr. Gildari. Thank you very much, Zia. Um, I, I want to uh, just point out two things before I ask Tim the, the, a question. Uh, this was a lady that um, basically, she was the one that uh, asked for the recount. She went and swore to an affidavit and asked for a recount. So I would like you to um, talk about that. And the second thing is, she was the one that stopped the House House registration. She went right. in, and within a few weeks, she did stop the House House registration. So I'd like you to take the, in that into account. I understand she was there every single day. Maybe Tim could tell us a little um, about her performance there. She was there every single day of the recount for the three days. Um, never missing a day, never took a day off. So I, I just want well, to point well, that out to you. Leonard, my friend, without even asking my panelists, I will strongly disagree with you. That, that uh, house, house registration is a partisan thing. It was designed to create all kinds of con um, uh, confusions over these elections. And it is not even worthy to spend air time on, on what Mr. Patterson did, because everybody has conveniently forgotten, that is from the APNU AFC side, that we have continuous registration. Look, let me say this. Mr. Joe Harmon is a dual citizen. If he has a right to be on our list, then every Guyanese who's living overseas, born Guyanese has a right to be on our list. So this nonsense of a bloated list is exactly that. Nonsense, smoke, intended to throw in all kinds of colors into these elections. Oh, yo, 
the chairperson stopped the house to house registration. She stopped it. Give her credit for that. Well, and, and, uh, <laughs> go on, go on. Uh, all right, all right. And, and Tim, I want to ask you this uh, with regards to that low and fill report and the issue of advice, the word advice. I want to ask you, what do you, uh, what is your take on the word advice that the chairperson must take the chief elections officers advice in the consideration of that report? Could you explain what your take is on that word advice? Um, I don't think the word advice goes beyond the ambit of um, the tabulation and the summary. Um, I think that she's entitled to ask him questions within that ambit so that if he's relied on some document that, that's within the box or in the um, observation report or some um, assessment he makes from those observation reports, I think she's entitled, I think that she it contemplates that she asks him for further information to draw a conclusion. But I don't think she asks him to draw the conclusion. She's asking him for information from those observation reports so that she can draw the, so that the commission can draw the conclusion. Mm -hmm. And I think the word advice goes and that how, way. It doesn't uh, ask him to give an opinion. It asks him for more information as needed so that she is enabled to draw a conclusion. But, but, but and how is a, uh, how did the recount so, order and, um, contemplate? And, uh, yes, yes, sir. There's, there's one thing I wanted to mention. I, I think that both Jerry and Joe have, to some extent, been unfair to the chairman, and I'll tell you why. Um, Jerry's right. She did come into the game late, but she is a um, she's a very experienced administrator. She understands legislation, she can look at the structure, she can see if it's airtight, she can see if it has gaps or loopholes. And I have no doubt that she was very quickly able to determine for herself what I've concluded, that the system was very good. And therefore she sat down and she observed as the system was implemented all the way to the 2nd of March, when a good electoral process took place. Nothing went wrong. She did her job very well up to the 2nd of March. And for anyone to try to blame Mingo's antics on her would be absolutely unreasonable because I don't think anyone in this forum anticipated what Mingo would do. It, it's a bit unreasonable for her to read Mingo's mind in advance to anticipate. So just as with the other nine returning officers who um, assessed their SOPs and made a declaration. She wasn't physically there when they did it. She sat back and waited for Mingo to do her do his job, and she was quite entitled to do that. So I don't Thank agree you. with Jerry Jerry's approach that she didn't have years in it and didn't know what she was doing, not at all. She saw a good system, and she saw the system work, and she expected it to work. And equally, I think with that same brain she has and that same legal experience, she now knows what she has to do. Because that same system, the same order that has been created by GCOM and, and gazetted by GCOM, she knows what to do with it. She knows what to expect from Lowenfield. She, mm -hmm. I am sure, already knows that Lowenfield has gone outside of his remit. And she knows the way forward, legally. So the question that we all have to hold our breath and see is, is she going to do the right thing going forward? But oh, let's say that she doesn't know what she's doing. She has always been a very capable lady, and she... To me, she has not had the opportunity one way or another to demonstrate bona fides or malafides. Okay. So, Tim, I know you got to go in a couple of minutes. I have, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to ask you to answer my former question probably at another time, but I have a question for you with regards to 177, that famous, uh, you know, constitutional um, clause there. Now, it does give Mr. Uh, Lowenfield a, a great deal of power. And would you say that Mr. Lowenfield's report thus far fulfills that advice that he has to give according to the word of 177? Good question. I think, I think you've gone to the wrong source, Yo. Okay. Because Lowenfield is not acting under the Representation of the People's Act or the Constitution directly. He is okay. acting under the order. This report he has made is not a Section 96 report under the RPA. This mm -hmm. is not a report that says how many seats must be allocated and that kind of thing. This is a report specifically under the order that is to summarize 
what the observation sheets have. That is all. So this is not a report under the traditional strategy. It is the report that is contemplated as a completely separate document under the order because of the mess we're in. That order came about because of the mess we're in. So I think it's a mistake to try to tie his first report. His second report, when the commissioners receive his summary of the um, observation sheets, as, as they have now done, and they meet, and assuming they decide to go ahead with the recall, at this stage, they come back under the umbrella of the statute and say to him, give us a report under Section 96 using the recall numbers, which will tell us who to declare for and how many seats. And that, that is when you go back under the umbrella of the traditional statutory position. Thank you. Well, Tim, I know you have to go, and um, you know I'm sorry that we're losing I'm, you. So I'm early. very sorry about that in the spring of time. It was a pleasure. Um, yeah. And I hope, As I always. hope to hear more from you. We certainly look forward. You got to make up, uh, make this up to us in, on another night soon, sir. But have a good night Absolutely. and our regards to your family. Thank you very much, sir. You too. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to come back to Mr. Mr. Govaya and Mr. Mr. Degu Boyer, gentlemen. Captain, I hear you and like you. I mean, the last time you were in room 592, we virtually held hands and did prayers for the good health of the chairman. So certainly a lot of a lot of uh, Guyanese are, are praying for her good health and wants the good thing right thing to happen. Captain, a message, uh, um, sorry, a question from one of our viewers. And the question was directed to both you and I. In 2015, Yog Mahadeo started an, a, a petition gathering thousands of names to call on Donald Ramatar to concede. What have you done now, Yog? Well, here is what I've done. We started room 592, and we are agitating and calling every day. Cap question to Captain Jerry Govaya. Mr. Govaya, in 2015, you went and you led a delegation to meet Donald Ramatar for him to concede and step out. What have you done? Have you led such a delegation to David Granger? First of all, we don't um, we we don't have access to David Granger, um, and in 2015, the delegation was led by the chairman of the private sector commission at the time, um, Ramesh Prasad, who was a very 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 articulate young man, and he did walk into to President Ramatar's office um, with a delegation which which I was part of, and he did say to President Ramatar that sir. Um, we are asking you to concede the elections. And if we didn't wait for an answer, we left his office. And mm -hmm. Donna Ramatar did the, the decent and the right thing. He and his government accepted the GCOM declaration that they've lost, and they left office. Um, and we expect no less from um, the David Granger administration. They have lost the election. Um, the numbers have shown that very, very clearly. This was a recount. Um, this was a recount. And what is... What is unfortunate about this yog is that the same SOPs that the PPP had and the PPP published, the same SOPs that matched, that matched blow by blow all the SORs is the same SOPs that the APNU had. And the fact that APNU would have had those SOPs from about the 3rd of March, and they, they would have done the same addition that was done in March by the PPP, they would have done the same addition, the same addition we did now for the recount. And the fact that APNU hid, hid their SOPs and refused to make it public and refused to acknowledge what those figures, maths do not lie. Mathematics is an exact science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they hid what they knew as a fact for all this time and drag us through and spend $500 million in this recount when they knew what the results were since in March. Mr. Govai, um, I must say, sir, I am surprised and shocked at you that today, one year after NCM, you are saying math is an exact science. <laughs> <laughs> you threw him a car while there, Yog. You know, you know but, but Captain, I have another question for you, um, and, and it's twofold. And, and Nick, feel free to step in too. Um, so question from one of our viewers and viewers and listeners, please know that our lines will be open for you to call in your questions. We may not be able to answer them all, but we can certainly investigate and come back to you with an answer tomorrow. But our lines will be open in a matter of minutes. Captain, question. Um, 
the house to house, the court, the court was the body that effectively stopped the house to house registration when it said you cannot remove persons from the list. So it was not the chairman, uh, your comment on that. And two was the point that Madam Claudette Singh had an option to redeem herself by releasing the SOPs, which she chose not to do. She did not because when she agreed on the recount, when she agreed on the recount, the recount was going, I know that the SOPs, if she had released the SOPs, then it was going, and I, it, would, it, it would have probably made things easier. But the fact that she agreed and President and David Granger and, and, and Barrett Jack, they agree on the recount. I think that is where she wanted to be, she wanted to concentrate her efforts. The fact that here today we are, where we have all the SORs, the SORs are matching all the SOPs. Um, I would say we need to move forward on that issue, but certainly the fact that the fact that AP and you have not released their SOPs, it it still it casts a very dark shadow, dark shadow on them, because it it it, it demonstrated a level of, of of divorce from the truth, divorce from the truth. But I want to come back to something that you were talking about this issue with the lists. This issue with this bloated list, and I heard David Granger today talk about this bloated list as some kind of uh, a component of, of a concern for our elections. In 2008, Yog, in 2008, what we did in 2008 as a country that we scrapped the old manual NRR and we went to house to house registration in 2008 and we did a completely new registration using fingerprints, the biometrics of your fingerprint. And we did a complete new house to house registration. And then immediately after that, we started the continuous cycles of registration, where we were registering 14 year olds in their schools. And the minute they become 18, the, and we, we bought this new software, I think the whole thing cost about 600,000 US dollars. And we bought this new software that the minute you become 18, you're kicked over to the voters and so on. So we developed a world class secure NRR in 2008. And it was updated. It was a very dynamic list that was being updated every, every time you had a continuous cycle of registration. So there are about 1.5, 1.6 million Guyanese living in the world today. 750 living here, another 750 living all over the world. Those people over the last 10 years have been coming home on holidays. They've been registering a lot of the pilots and bloggers and miners and Amerindians who are moving all the time finally had an opportunity to, to register. So there was no, absolutely no problem with the voters list, um, with the entire NR. And more particularly, because of the security of that voters list, you could never have one person appearing twice in the list because fingerprints don't lie. Fa a face may look familiar, but the fingerprints don't lie. And so this list is the most secure list we've ever had. The first time we used this list, Yoga, was in 2011. Then we used it in 2015. We use it in the, in the 2016 local government and then 18 local government. And then we use it in the, in, in the 2020 election. And this list is the most secure and more sophisticated list in the history of Guyana. So this issue but bloated list is absolute nonsense. You are right about that. Well, well, indeed. And, and Captain, I would want you to come back on a future program with probably Mr. Chris Ram in particular. And I want to talk about this list from an analytical perspective, um, and also in response to um, Mr. Uh, uh, the gentleman who made a presentation on, on this Stanley thing Ming. about the Stanley Ming, Mr. Stanley Ming, I'm sorry, um, apologies, Mr. Ming. Nick, I certainly feel, Nick, that Mr. Jerry Govaya is being very diplomatic. Nick, couldn't GCOM? do the right thing by releasing their SOPs? Yeah, and we have precedent set by that. I think we talked about that last time when the PSC had visited GCOM both in 11 and 15 and asked them and were presented with G copies of GCOM's SOPs to answer queries made by APNU in, in those days, in 11 and 15, to, start, to solve the, the protests that were going on at that time. APNU, mm -hmm. you know, when, when they, they liked the private sector commission, they had asked the private sector commission to help with NTV, and they did. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of this could have been solved 
had GCOM released its SOPs before. And even now, because one of the things that we, we're finding challenging is the narrative is that the elections aren't credible. The, there is, and, and they can't, you know, they can't even get the narrative straight because they're not sure if they're saying it's fraud or these presiding officers just missed it, but the PPP are perpetrating the fraud. But, you know, if you go back to their SOPs, right? Mm -hmm. So you go back to GCOM's SOPs, it'll show that both major parties signed off in almost all of the 2,339 ballot polling stations. Mm -hmm. So you can't now come after your agents have agreed and said, look, there have been no material issues here that we refuse to sign off these SOPs and mm -hmm. then say, well, you know, there was material fraud. So we're saying the whole nation, because uh, uh, at least half of the voting population got together on some secret platform that they know each other to communicate with. And they decided that they're going to impersonate each other or dead people. I don't know if they, they went to the repentier and start taking names off the, 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 the tombstone, you know, and, and went and vote. I mean, right. at what but, point do we call madness madness? Well, well let you me know? tell you something. Let, let me tell you something, because the ridiculousness, the, the, the rubbish, the, the trash, um, you know, I shared this with Mr. Gildari two weeks ago. There is a term, Jerry, that is called fraudulence. Fraudulence. The action or quality of cheating, lying, or deceiving someone. We have had five years of fraudulence. They have been so smooth at it. So now, when the Kool-Aid is being shared out, it's easy for people to drink. And I, I want to share, I, I know that this is being harsh, but sometimes that's what truth is. Truth is sometimes being harsh. Here is what, here is a Kool-Aid. Samuel Legge says, Jerry, you are being foolish. People die and people migrate. So we don't need, don't we need to have the list updated? Sir, if you didn't listen, don't comment. Because the, the list is a live list. It is consistently and constantly updated. That's, that's why you, you, it's named by the term we use to describe our list, that it's updated consistently. It's updated constantly. So you need to get your facts right. Now, fraudulence. SOPs were not released by um, GCOM. But here is how the plot even thickens. Granger single-handedly appointed Patterson. This election, Jerry, the die was cast years ago. Granger said to the Chief Justice, you have your views, I have mine, and I will appoint Patterson. Patterson appointed Keith Lowenfield. Patterson appointed Myers. So, for them to now say PPP or somebody else did something to GCOM, it's absolutely, you know, I was going to say gerrymandering, but I don't want to go to that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Captain. You're calling my name again here. It's absolutely ridiculous. Look, the truth is, those who are interested in assessing, analyzing, and seeing what's happening, you could go back to a couple of years and start connecting the dots. And I'm going to put a political thing to you now, my co-host, Mr. Leonard Gildari. Oh my. Mr. Gildari, oh, four years ago, the Ministry of Presidency budget moved from $5.8 billion to $12 billion. Let me repeat. Ministry of Presidency budget moved from $5.8 to $12 billion. You know what the citizens of this country have seen, sir? Green fence, green walls, green this, green that. I don't know how much the fence cost, but I certainly hope that the attorney, uh, the uh, auditor general can release the report of what the fence is. So, Leonard, when this government changes, should they spend money to repaint those walls and, and fences? It's going to be red now. I don't think the Guyana people is going to tolerate that. Well, let me ask you a question. There, 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 there is, and this is a three gentlemen there. And come back to um, uh, to Claudette Singh. 
do you believe that she's in a very good place at the moment? Because regardless what she says tomorrow or Tuesday, she is going to be hated by one side or, or liked by the other side. Um, you know, do, we, do you believe that there's going to be a long line of people lining up to become chairman after this? Let me just say this to you. The people, when she make the right decision, the whole world is going to be on her side. The United States, Canada, um, the UK, the European Union, the Commonwealth, the OAS, CARICOM, the Carter Center, um, the, 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 entire, um, the entire local observer teams, she is going to be on the right side making the right decision. And the only people who will hate her are the people who are trying to steal the elections. But, but that hate comes at a high cost, Jerry. Do you remember? I don't want to call the gentleman's name, but do you remember a couple of years ago, the, was it the general secretary of a particular party was beaten when he entered into the party headquarters because he went there with, 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 uh, with um, some negative news? I heard about that situation, yes. The, well, there are videos circulating. Leonard, to come back to your question, though, it, 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 I would want to say that any professional that believed that they could run a company, run an entity, and manage, and, and, and you know, it is true, we have been harsh on Claudette saying, one can only imagine the pressure that good lady is in. And like Captain, I think the rest of us, we echo that that you know, we certainly wish the, the, the chairman well, and we know she's going to do the writing, even though part of our minds are saying, well, we knew or we thought we knew Lowenfield was going to do the right thing. And right, it, uh, Leonard, Lowenfield mm -hmm. will argue he did the right thing for some people, because whatever decision anyone that makes will be right for some and wrong for some. But you know something, Gil? I read somewhere, somebody was saying, listen, the whole world, the whole Western world, all the observers, they were, they were all condemning GCOM with the Mingo um, fraud, but nobody is, 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 is commenting and, 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 uh, and ridiculing this new fraud of all of these dead people. And I made the point, be, wake up and smell the roses. Nobody believes it. Nobody believes it. You know, this reminds me when I was a young boy, I used to play cards with my brother. And I was, and my brother was good at these cards. But every time he, every time I was about to beat him, what he would do, he would take his feet and he would scatter the cards. So we break up the game. So we, and we couldn't, we couldn't continue the game, and he would laugh. And so, to me, unfortunately, this is the kind of juvenile childishness that is happening here. Because certainly, if you read the book How to Rig an Election, they would never tell you to rig it as transparent and as juvenile and childish that we have seen with the Mingo fiasco and fraud and this Lowy Field fiasco now, where he's mm -hmm. taking a wild allegations and somehow making it fact that he's being judge and jury and executioner and, and this and finds 285,000 people. It's absolutely ludicrous. And this is what they're doing. This is what they're doing, unfortunately. So gentlemen, um, I just want to bring something else to you now. Now, look. Um, we have a situation. If APNU AFC is saying that they expect the chairman to declare these elections null and void, and everybody else except APNU AFC is saying that that is not a possibility under the law, um, there is therefore a likelihood that they themselves will say, well, we cannot accept these elections. What then? You know, you, you know, you, I think, tell you something. A lot of people have been positive that we're going to have street protests and, and, and a, you know, a lot of upheaval if that happens. But I'll tell you something. I, you, you, I've been following Paul Harris's cartoons in, in Stabbock News a lot. And he's, you know, he, he's, he's made a point that do not think that the followers of APNU AFC are just going to be led like sheep. There, there's a lot that people will say about historical uh, you know, lack of acceptance of results and street protests. But I think that 
we have an intelligent uh, population now, more intelligent. They have more access to information. And I think that while they may, you know, they may be silent in terms of seeing what their leaders are doing is wrong, but I don't think that they feel that they want to upturn society and to destroy the country. Because at the end of the day, uh, when once we have a democratic society, they will have their chance again in five years to really? give their leaders the push <laughs> that they need to, to, to be in power. That's, mm -hmm. the, you know, that's the thing that we're fighting for here. We're not fighting for a party. We're fighting for the ability to hold leaders accountable. Nick, if you take Nick, that Nick, hold on, hold, hold on. Nick, mm -hmm. let, let me tell you something. Somebody just sent this to me. Sorry to upset your train of thinking. Yeah, no, well. one, one note I have here, and gen ladies and gentlemen, I don't, this is not meant to be insulting to anyone. A group of old people wants to hold on to power because they know it's now or never. A group of old people wants to hold on to power. I'm reading to you here because they know there is no coming back. A group of old people wants to hold on to power because this is it. Nick, what do you say to that? You know, I, I agree that, that there are a few who are trying to really bend reality to hold on to power. And when we were going into the Ashman's building and the narrative was fresh that the PPP rigged the elections and look at all the PPP election agents in the building. And we came outside as observers out of that Ashman's building. You saw APNU AFC supporters gathered together in the hundreds outside of the Ash uh, Ashman's building. Outside of the recount center, when it was more clear that they had not won, you saw maybe three, four, five maximum. They, you know, APNU never released their SOPs for a reason. And their actual supporters were kept in the dark about what the real truth of the outcome of the election was. The recount has now dispelled that. So it has mm -hmm. indeed left it now to just a group of old men and old people trying to hold on to power for power's sake. And the reason they have to do it so badly and, and, and it's, they, they try to rig the election in such a transparent manner is because they did not give to their base in government what they had promised and what they should have. So their base decided that they weren't happy. That's, mm -hmm. that's what an election does. Captain. You know, I also want to bring this to you that, you know, I've been hearing this narrative about race and I want to make it very clear to you that both of these parties ran very, very, very impressive campaigns. I have seen, I have seen campaigns where there were sea of green and yellow, and I've seen campaigns where there were a sea of red, but only the color. But in terms of the people, there were a complete mixture of Guyanese of all walks of life, all shades and colors. And in the PPP, you have an entire cadre of, of Afro-Guyanese in the PPP at the moment. You have a, you have a whole set of Indo-Guyanese in the, in the PNC, APNU camp at the moment. And so this election was fought on issues. This election was not fought on race. And so this is not, a, and, I, and, and we want to make that very clear. This election was about issues and the Guyanese people voted on the issue and they choose the PPP. This is no longer uh, we don't know. We know exactly who the Guyanese people choose, or the Guyanese people choose the PPP because they got the more votes. And these elections were not fraudulent. They were not rigged, um, at least during election day. The only fraud that happened was in the, uh, is on the Mingo. And now, now we are seeing this attempt here by Lowing Field. But this election was fair and free and transparent and was not based on race. Captain. Just before we open the lines, and ladies and gentlemen, as soon as Captain finish answering this question, we are going to open the lines for a couple of minutes. Captain, Mr. Granger, in his most recent speech, uh, interaction with the media, he made some statements that alluded to a possibility of, of a, a certain type of rule, a certain type of government, if these elections were annulled. 
let me ask this to you, sir, as a former member of the armed services in this country. Knowing that the APNO AFC government has in its direct employment a, a lot of former army personnel, is this a disguised call to persons within the army and to persons within the employment of the government? Well, I don't remember Guyana declaring a state of emergency in my lifetime. I don't remember. Um, and I would say that if these elections were, um, and when it is declared as, as it legally should be, if, if the, the, the president, uh, uh, if the government refuses to leave office and attempt to cloak that in a state of emergency, um, that would be a very sad day for Guyana. And Guyana really then becomes a Pariah state. And then we also, President Granger, um, who is still the president at the moment, um, would go down in history. Um, he and all his people and his family, and they will be they will be remembered in a very dark in, 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 a, in a very dark cloud overhead Guyana. And so that would be a dark day for Guyana if he ever does that. Um, I hope, mm -hmm. I hope that. You know, he, he, he campaigned under the banner of, of honesty and decency and integrity. And I hope that when the time comes, he leads this nation and he leads his party with honesty, integrity and decency. OK, uh, thank you for that. And let me just respond to Jason McDonald. Sir, star, stop trying to plant racism in the comments column. We do not welcome your negative comments about race. In fact, Mr. Jason McDonald, please assess, for example, a new and united party, TCI, TNM, PPPC. Please assess these parties for their racial mix and racial balance. And if you don't like what we are saying, you don't have to listen, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to open our lines uh, for your calls, and your calls can be directed to our, the head of the local observer teams. Jerry, uh, Captain, and Nick, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you we're gonna do this, but you know, you have stepped into room 592, and so you gotta expect the unexpected. But you, you know, you made, a, you made a good point that this is not, a, this is not a, a, about the PPP and the PNC. This is about the PNC, APNO, and everybody else, including all those small parties. That is, a, they are really a mixture of all our races. They're a reflection of Guyana. And so this is not about the PPP and the PNC anymore. This is about the APNU and everybody else. All those small parties, civil society, the international community across the world. There's not one single country mm -hmm. that is standing up for this attack on our democracy, not one. Jerry, meanwhile, we're receiving these calls. Another question to you and Nick. Nick, you first. Um, in terms of Granger's recent comments, and uh, I believe holding uh, Claudia Singh at a particular angle now, kind of almost telling her you have to do this. Are we not entering into dangerous territories for Granger to now come out? He had all the time in the world to say, hey, Jagde and I are having talks about shared governance, but now, you're coming out like as if it is uh, uh, holding people at ransom. What's your thoughts, Nick? You know, I analyzed the president's statements uh, when, when we were kind of looking at, at what was going on from March to now. And he, he said actually very little. Eh? You, you got to go back. <laughs> he has said maybe five statements up until the past two weeks. And then suddenly he's been in the news. You know, with live video, then Mark, Mark Benchcup, and uh, and then this morning on Guyana Chronicle. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that his messaging went from the elections are free and fair, but there seems to be an issue with District 4 uh, tabulation to the elections were not free and fair. It was because of that issue we we okay. stepped into the recall. Well, Nick, along just, with just, that. Just pause part. for a minute. Uh, Josh, let's take the caller on the line. Caller, you're on the line. You're on air. And yes, I'm on air. My apologies you. there. I no, think Josh no, and G not you, you Leonard. Yeah. We, we have a caller on the line. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Caller, you're on the line. Yes, sir. Good night to you, Nipanil. 
Seems and like we lost I, that call. I, yes, I Leonard. Be, um, uh, uh, Nick, sorry, uh, you can go back to your train sorry, thoughts. Sorry, Dr. Yeah. on the line there, Dr. Yo. So it says, with that narrative change on, on the, the fraud, you also saw the introduction mm. of this shared go governance narrative as well. Well, you know, you, it's a hard thing to now come with that narrative after being in government for five years and then even on the campaign trail and even early on in elections, there was no such discussion. So now you're coming towards the end, closer to the de declaration to introduce this discussion. Mm -hmm. Caller, you're on there. Hello, good night. Leonard, you're good at this. Proceed. Hello? Yes. Uh, good evening, Kali. You're on the air. Are you hearing me? Not here in the air. I have issue. Hello? Okay. Yes. All right. But, but I want to ask you, is Jerry and um, Nick still in the air? I want to ask yes. them, what, what are the plans by of the private sector to, um, uh, let's assume the situation goes south, um, or let's assume that the, the GCOM decided that it's not going to accept the result, the reconc results, but rather go in a different direction. What are the plans by the private sector to handle that situation or not handle it? Those are uncharted waters. Um, the private sector commission um, will always stand on the, on, the, on the side of the rule of law. And, um, and I am expecting GCOM to, do the, to make the right declaration. I'm expecting if anybody is unhappy with it that they will they will do they will um they will take it to an, to an election petition to the court um i cannot imagine the unthinkable which is that we are not going to accept the results of the most credible and transparent elections we've had in a long time so i, I it, it's hard for me to contemplate that and okay. the private sector commission have not discussed that possibility of, Sorry. of such a such an uncharted so, waters. So we have, it seemed like we had the caller on the line, but we in the room, the panel could not hear the caller. Joshua, can you do your magic and let us hear the caller? Still can't hear. Hello? Hello? Hi. Good evening, gentlemen. Yes, this is another caller. The yes, caller sir. that you had before got lost. And I dialed in and got in. Um, so my interest is this. Mr. Jerry Govayo, I am an independent counselor. I have no party preference. I listened to you the other night, and I come to assume that you're a man as far as which party has your criteria, that's who you, you back. And so I am the same. That's why I identify with you. You know me well, too. You know my whole family. I'm what you call Young Mac, from the teacher that you know as Old Mac. <laughs> yeah. I guess you know the hint, right? Anyway, so this is my issue. Now, Mr. Granger has been constantly saying that there's a four-prong procedure to the decision, to the final declaration, which is the final number four. And so we're at number three, where Mr. Lowingfield has given his um, summation of the elections. And one of the things about his summation is that APNU has more votes than the PPP. Last night, I kind of agree with Mr. Yog Mahadio when he used the quote, they have all the ducks in line. We all know what that means. Now, using that phrase and the count that Mr. Lowenfield gave out to the chairman and now the, sorry, the chairwoman and now her job is to announce that count. If she were to do like Mr. Granger is saying in his constant speeches that we have all the ducks in line so to speak or we know what we're doing as is the record. Suppose she were to announce what Lowenfield has declared to her. Um, my problem is what is going to happen after that. I, I just heard Jerry say he can't understand and he would not imagine what's going to happen. But I would really like to get an answer because this thing is frightening, very frightening to me. So, Jerry, this is Oren McDougall. I guess you knew that. 
that's my problem. Sorry, I, I didn't Can hear what the person me? said. I, I, it doesn't matter, just the question itself. Mm -hmm. um, your, could you, I, because he, it, it was a little bit in the background, what is it, this exact thing? Just, just in, a question. In summary, the person is asking that, uh, suppose um, the chairman proceeds to take low and fields line. Um, what are the consequences or what's, what's to happen next? You know, we have to allow GCOM to do their work, and I agree with that. Um, and at this time, what when the chairman rules, um, the the uh, the political parties, not not certainly the observers, but all we 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 stand by our by our by our observation. Um, but in terms of what the political parties will do, depending on how the the chairman of GCOM rules, that is a political issue. The, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the local observers will only observe and we will write our reports, which will go international, which will mm -hmm. go to the, uh, like we did in the, in the, in the first instance. Mm -hmm. uh, we, will, we will then let the whole world know what our opinion, but we, uh, we, are, not, we are not part of that game. Mm -hmm. So basically we are now, we are now uh, telling everyone, let's just wait. Um, we, are, we are now like Mr. Mr. Granger. Let's wait, let's wait on the chairman and see what she says. However, Captain, let me throw this back at you. The president has come out saying, well, he is, he's adopted and embraced all of uh, Harmon's attacks on, on, on different heads of states and former heads of, heads of state and so forth. Um, by doing that, has the president therefore in a way, announced to this country that whatever the CARICOM observer mission said, no, we're not going to accept it because, uh, they, you know, they have uh, they have said things that, that we don't. That is not true. That is not true. That is uh -huh. not true. The president, you know, up to the, up to today, the president confirmed his regard and respect for CARICOM. The president commit to um, to giving due respect and regard to the CARICOM observers report, and so I expect the president to. To, um, to, 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 to stand by his word that the CARICOM observer's report uh, will be respected and will be taken into account and mm -hmm. we all will respect it. So low and field mm -hmm. got one view, but like the president said, CARICOM is not just, an, is not just a, 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 an outside observer, but they have been embedded in the law in this, mm -hmm. in, this in, in the, in, in the gazetted order. And so CARICOM views are now part of this, of, of where we are going, and he commit. The only thing I find very strange with the president, uh, with David Granger, is he continue to ignore the fact, like you said today, some one of the reporters asked him about the, his SOPs, and he said he never, they said if you never saw the SOPs, how did you, why did you say you win? Why did you go to a party to celebrate your victory? He said he didn't, he saw a spreadsheet. And so- Well, I would like to talk I, about the issue. Uh, issue of um, respect there because two things. I, I saw says Gunraj, Commissioner says Gunraj in a Facebook page about a, a couple of hours ago. A meeting of GCOM is scheduled for tomorrow to discuss the CEO's report. I'm not yet in possession of the CARICOM report or any information thereon. Why I raise the issue of respect? Because today something happened that had me very disturbed. The president had an engagement with the media. And you want to hear something shocking? Do I need to say it or you guys know about that? No, tell us. Well, today, the Starbuck News and the Kaicher News and the newsroom and other independent media were not invited. Oh, really? So who were the people asking him questions? Why are you asking me, Javi? I'm just telling you what the reporters uh, reported to uh, uh, senior, the senior management of Kaicher News. So when you talk about respect and things like that, I could tell you that um, it's not a very nice thing, and I I think that's the height of disrespect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's new one. Thank let you me, for let raising me say, that. I really thought let, when I let's, heard let's face all facts. Of, I saw the interview and I did not know. I really thought that the president had invited our mainstream media, and I heard questions no. coming from the floor. What what <laughs> what Larry just said was shocking. But let me tell you something more shocking. Let me tell you something more shocking. You want to hear this? And as we're talking, because these are the things when we talk about the mature society, we're talking about the oil, billions of barrels of oil out there. We're talking about moving this country into another thing. We haven't people like yourself and Nick Boyer and, and, and Yog Mahadeo, myself, never radio, but I'm, I'm forced to go into radio right now. But guess what, um, Jerry? 
at this point in time, when we talk about moving this country to another country, and you're not even inviting the newspapers who are independent, Starbuck News and Kaichu News, the biggest newspaper in Guyana, and you're not inviting them. We have invited the Yog Mahadi and myself over and over. We pick up the phone every single day and call the coalition mm -hmm. for them to come. So, Why? So we have a call on the line. Caller, go ahead. Okay, we lost it. Uh, so, Leonard, to your point, I don't know if Jerry won, but let me just say this quickly. Mr. Abel, I'm glad to see you online, sir. I wish to announce to the country an invitation. Repeat what I asked you two weeks ago. Come in room 592 and let's talk. Don't yes, let me say, Abel, say to your nose that the, yes. the, the radio is yeah, there. Don't stay on the out. Do not stay right. on the phone. So, Mr. Uh, Abel, don't do talk, that. Come here and do come, that. Come to room 592 and talk, and let's have an open discussion. And bring your yeah, SOPs when you come. I'll do anything. Don't try to come, come and speak to the radio, and let us talk in a mature manner. Do not do that. Uh, co correct. And bring your yeah. SOPs when you come to. Um, so, yes, Leonard, I'm surprised. I mean, you... you yeah, not, it, it, is, it is very upsetting, you. It's very, very upsetting when we talk about respect. I have a lot of regrets uh, for the president. Go ahead. I believe that he wanted to do the right thing. Go ahead. Go ahead with the call. Hello? Yes, you on the air, sir. Go ahead. You on the air, sir. Go ahead. Okay. I think um, we would have lost that one. Yeah. Josh, you would need to look at the volumes because if, they list, if the viewers and listeners are hearing but we are not, then we wouldn't know. Um, so, so yes, um, Leonard, it is upsetting. Um, but you know, Jerry, um, isn't it a, a, a creature or isn't it a habit of, of the, the various governments when, when the media gets on like this? I remember Bayer called the media uh, some very uh, uncomfortable words during his tenure. And now Granger has not even acknowledged the existence of, of the independent media. The media is exceptionally important for our country and for the world and we must respect the media and we must allow the media to do their work and anyone anyone that is obstructing or restricting the media you know you i remember when i went to the convention center and in the first day and i saw where they had the media i was so appalled i was furious that we could disrespect our media core the way we did outside that we locked them outside the gate and put them in a tent in the grass. With I mean, it was just it was just completely disrespectful. And I have to agree with with Gildaro, and I've never seen him so agitated like I seen him a moment ago. So no, because Gildaro, you know why you know you know why you, um, uh, Captain, when you have young reporters come in there, that you tell them this is one of the best career to follow, and they come back and ask you, you know, we're saying this thing here. Did you receive any invitation in the in your email? Today and I went and checked the email and I can't find anything and I don't know and I'm seeing it. So you're faced with, we're faced with, we have invited the president officially to come on the program. Well, there's a long list of other people who are ahead of the or who are in the line with you. And then you go two times and go to Mark Ben's cup. I mean, I, you, you see that. And then the reporters come to you, young reporters in the media now, and you tell them this is one of the best things that you could ever do with your life. And then you have to explain to them. Go ahead, Collie, you're near. Hello, Go good ahead, night. Collie, you're near. Hello? Yes, good evening. Good night, good night. Good night, sir, you're near. Go ahead. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes, we're hearing you. Yes, um, I want to say good night to Mr. Yog. Hello? Yes, we're hearing you. Go ahead, sir, make a point. Yes, yes. Good night to all of you. Good night. I, I don't really have a question to ask, but something that is really, really very clear, and I can't understand why the APNO AFC government can't see this. For example, at the end of March the 2nd, 2020, the president, along with all the observers, they compliment GCOM for such a transparent, free, and fair 
election. When the count started, and all nine regions were counted, and all the SOPs were handed in, they did not come up with any idea to say that, well, dead people vote. They did not come up with any idea to say that migrated people vote. Absolutely nothing. At one point in time, they were preparing to celebrate and to swear in Mr. Granger with no indication and information putting out to the public that says, hey, listen, this election is not free and fair because dead people vote and migrated people vote. Even at the point where they were counting in the Ashman building and the force interruption stood out there, they still did not mention anything about dead people and migrated people voted. They were holding on on the spreadsheet that Mingo declared and says that that is the true numbers of the, of the counting. Surprisingly, as time passed and they recognized that they are losing, they started now to come up with all manner of excuses. Now, one of the shameful things of these people, they are at the highest level of, of leadership in this country. And to go publicly with such a brave face, bright face, and to tell the people of this country that, hey, we have facts to prove that dead people vote in this country. We have facts to prove that migrated people vote in this country. Where were those facts before they, they, they started this counting? The second thing is that it is so surprising and shocking that the very people who the APNU AFC government had placed there at the polling station on election day. And I guess they were such confident over those people that they had placed there to say, listen, I'm sending you there to observe anything that is abnormal. And I showed that those who were sitting there with, 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 with that proudness to say, I am defending my party here. Lo and behold... At this point, they threw all their people under the bus. Are, are, isn't this such great disregard for their own people? But I want to say something in closing. These people did not only fail the nation, the people of Guyana. They failed their representative also on GCOM Day, saying that, listen, you were there, you didn't saw dead people went in there and vote. Mr. Yog and others, I, I, I want to say clearly, these people are shameless. They are very shameless. And why I can say this is that because when they were toppled by the no confidence motion, they were so shameless to go till to the highest level of, of, of judiciary for them to say, okay, that their 33 is indeed majority of 32. And any small child Thank can you. say, well, listen, I know that. You don't have to go to the CCJ to tell you that. Now Thank they you. are embarrassing themselves again in this situation. Mm -hmm. I am, am, am trusting, I am trusting that the, 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 the cheer stand up for what is right. It, it, is, so, it is so disbelieving that such a person when she was sitting in the court, she was firm in making decision under the law. Surprising yes. now, she is faced with decision making and she behaves as if uh, she is she's not trained or she doesn't know what to do. Thank so thank you. you. And I trust that um, other yes. viewers and people of the nation heard what I said. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. And yes, everyone did hear your comments and we thank you for those comments. And I just want to quickly make this additional comment. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I've noticed that a few pictures are circulating. Somebody has sent it to me. 
Um, I don't know the origin, but if you're sharing pictures that involve children, get a life. Don't share something involving children. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to uh, additionally comment as follows. And let me make this very, very clear. Mr. Abel and others. Fraud has been alleged. Irregularities have been alleged. There has been no evidence that has been put forward by you or your camp, Abel, or by anyone. We have seen that a list that came supposedly from the commissioner of police has been rubbished by public media. And maybe this is why the media was not invited. We have seen all your death certificates has been rubbished by another independent media house. So to call an allegation as evidence means not only we have a problem with mathematics in this country, we also have a problem with English in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to allow ourselves, as Oren Gordon said two, two weeks ago on this show, use our brains. We are logical people. This is not Jonestown time where we are being fed any kinds of things. Let us use our brains. We can all think. Finally, I'm going to say this. Mr. Granger, everybody's forgetting that Granger is the head of his list. He cannot say that he has not seen the SOPs. He is the head of his list. He is the presidential candidate. And the presidential candidate in any normal country, in any normal human and humane party, would have all the information at his fingertips. So that, that is absolutely unacceptable if he is to say that he also fell for that thing of spreadsheet to bedsheet because it means something is really wrong with this picture if Mr. Granger is going to say he only saw a spreadsheet. You are the head of your list, man. Take control of your party. I'm sorry, Yo. uh, Leonard. Yes. Sorry, I have a call in the yeah. line. Yes. Good evening, caller. Good evening, your dear. Hi. Good night to everyone. Good night, sir. Um, in relation with the with all the trans that has transpired over the period. I Could you speak up a little, Kuala? Could yes. you speak up a little? You get it me clear? Yes. Good. Yes. So With all that has yeah. transpired over the period, I was part of the election team as a worker. I have been working with elections since 2006. And forgive your country, your service, is one of the best somebody can do. And for the, the, the Mr. Lowenfield to say at this stage all that was being said about the staff and all the agents and so on, it's very hard rendering. Because if anybody knows the logistics in having a ballot box move from the location they, they, at the place of pole, coming out of the mighty Essequibo River, in 11 o'clock minutes to midnight, they would see the darkness of that river. And he or she, whether we have staff coming out there, it is life risking. Because you don't know what you're going there, but for the, it is not the love of money. It is a love for your country. And at this, stage, and yeah. at this stage now, we are hearing all that has been transpired. You're hearing that. We accommodated in person. We accommodated persons without proper documents. But all those are out completely because it tells us that all the training that we had were futile. All the integrity as a staff and the oath that we took, it was just a waste of time, but it is not so. The persons who are clamoring... They should have looked at the agents as well. And I can guarantee we did what we had to do. And it was in uh, the integrity of this nation that we see the right for everyone as Guyanese. Good night. Good night. And thank you, sir. Thank you Good for night. your call. Thank you very much. Captain Nick, any comments? 
Yes, I wanted to comment on this. You know, this. I I was sitting in one of the counting stations, and um, and I watched this process, Yog. It was so clean and transparent, well organized, structured, and they as they open right. the ballot box and they and they and they and they check the ballots and they and they and they check the with the, with the blue light to make sure the ballots were had the security features. Everything was great. And then at the end of it, the young boy representing the APNU, he pulled out a list and everybody in the room seemed to have been expecting him to do that. And he started to call out these serial numbers. And then sometimes out of a hundred, they might say two of them were ticked. So I didn't know what is it that they were talking about. And then he said, well, those were migrants or those were, and I said, well, if you're claiming that, could we see the ticks? Could we please see the ticks? And they said, no, we can't see the ticks. And so mm -hmm. the, the, the observer said, but we are here to observe. And if you are saying there's a tick against a dead person's name or against a person's name who is not in Guyana, could we, please, could we please see the tick against a serial number? And they actually refused to show us the tick. So how could we, as observers, listen to this foolishness that you are saying that um, dead people voted and, dead, and people migrants voted and there, there were ticks against your name, and you refused to allow the observers to see the tick. It was crazy. Did they give a reason why they refused? No. It was just blunt, just blunt refusal. Right. So, so Captain, was this brought no. to uh, the commission's attention? Yes, the matter. Well, the matter went all the way up. I believe it went to Lowing Field, and the message came back down that no. And mm -hmm. um, the private sector actually put it in their, in their report. Okay, we have one more caller, and this will be probably be our last caller for the night. Caller, go ahead. Caller, good evening. Okay, so uh, 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 yeah, let, uh, let, let's let's close off the calls tonight. I'm sorry, tomorrow at 1 30, Mr. Gildari and yours truly will be on air, and we will be taking your calls early. And Mr. Gildari will speak more to that. Captain, I want to come back to you and Hello? Nick for your closing comment, but, but I need oh. to say a few things first, because perspectives are always very important. Ladies and gentlemen, I am seeing, and, and we are all seeing a lot of smoke being blown in the air, and I wish to address some of them. This thing about the, the bloated uh, list, that has been put to bed many times, but if persons chose to just listen to the political spin, then so be it. We can't convince you, but you need to listen to pragmatic approaches and pragmatic discussions on these things. It is said by some of the APNO AFC persons that, that you know, things like ID cards and observation reports and, and tabulation, all kinds of allegations are being made, yet not one bit of evidence. Now, Mr. Lowenfield has prepared a report in which he has undertaken to be, well, undertaken is a bad word, but in this way, in this case, probably up. He is undertaken to be judge, jury, executioner, and undertaker for these elections 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to remind you all, by Mr. Lowenfield writing what he did, he has called all of you polling agents, polling clerks, returning officers, deputy officers, all of you who manned your polling stations, Mr. Lowenfield has said you have all allowed fraud to be committed. And you are headmasters and teachers and public servants. So please stand up and speak out. Finally, I want to say this. For too long, we have had smoke being thrown in our face by the politicians. I want to appeal to everyone in this country, regardless of who forms the next government, never again must we allow some of these liars and perpetrators of billion dollar fraud to be allowed to fool us the way they have done. And to that gentleman who just wrote that PPP employed Mercury and that 34 million, sir, this show is not about PVP. You can go on the PVP channel and ask them about PVP. This is an independent platform, but I will respond to you. It is your party, APNU AFC, 
that spend $90 million to hire JJB and JJ and B LLC. So if you want, you need to listen to perspectives. And ladies and gentlemen, it's been wonderful to chat with you tonight. Nick, your closing thoughts. Well, thank you. So the main thing that I want to focus here is that we had the CEO report and our observations showed that no one was able to verify if the, the serial numbers being called out were in fact picked. In addition to that, the copy of the CEO's report that we received, so summarizing the observation, it's, it, it did not summarize, distill, or do anything except parrot back every serial number that was called out. So in Mr. Lowenspiel's observation, he, for instance, let's say ballot box XXY, he's saying if Apnu called out 82 names, he's listing those 82 names as being called out and marked off. That's not so. What we found were they would come with 82 names, let's say, per box, and two, usually it would be two, maybe three that were marked. And again, we have not been able to observe. No party agent, in fact, was able to observe whether those, those that marked list of electors was indeed, those names were marked. So we cannot go then and expect an entire election to be vitiated on hearsay. It's, it's utter madness. Correct. So we cannot expect ourselves to be put into a constitutional crisis on hearsay. Mm -hmm. And those boxes are now locked up in back of the container. This is a matter for an elections petition. We need to have a declaration and move on. I think like more like the other panelists here, we expect the chair to do the right thing, the legal thing. And the order has been very clear. The order was written with very clear language in what it expects the CEO to present to the commission and what the commission to deliver it on. Thank you. Nick, thank you. Just before I ask uh, Captain Jerry Govai to make his closing comments, let me share with you, ladies and gentlemen, certainly Cari uh, GCOM is meeting tomorrow. We have late breaking news that the Observer report, the, the CARICOM Observer team has completed their report, and it's a matter of time before they release that report, and I'm sure that report will go as for the order to the commission. So we, a lot of things we hope, we know will happen tomorrow. And uh, uh, Captain, I'm going to give you the last word. Therefore, it means I'm going to ask my co-host to kindly tell us what to expect tomorrow at the 1.30 uh, elections watch. Well, Leonard. absolutely. Yog. Thank you very much, uh, Yog. Uh, so tomorrow, 1.30, we're going to be straight with you with the elections COVID-19 watch. We're going to be telling you about uh, updates about GCOM's contemplation, consideration of that uh, uh, report from Kate Lowenfield. We're going to have uh, a couple of analysts on that program. We're going to be opening the lines as usual for persons to call and give their opinion. So it's going to be very hot tomorrow, but it's also a very critical day in the whole scheme of things. Uh, uh, when G come, I think uh, I think we're expecting them to close the deliberations, and maybe it could happen tomorrow. Yoga, I'm hearing that a declaration could be made as early as tomorrow. So we'd have to keep our fingers cro crossed. Um, and get ready. But tomorrow is going to be a critical uh, day in the whole scheme of things. Uh, so Indeed. get ready. And tomorrow night, two room 592. So we're going to be with you the entire day tomorrow to bring you those updates. Thank you. Thank you, Leonard. And indeed, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow will be probably one of the most important days in Guyana's history. And so stay tuned to Kaicho Radio. We are going to be with you from 1.30 tomorrow until 4. And then room 592, the doors will be open again 7.30 tomorrow evening. I want to remind you all that Guyana's uh, future does not necessarily rest in the hands of, of Claudette Singh. It rests in your hands and my hands. And whatever decision is made tomorrow, the future rests in how you and I can continue to live like Guyanese brothers and sisters. Captain, final word to you. Yo, I want to address two things. One, you know, today I saw a clip from Asha Kisun. She was being interviewed in a newsroom um, and she cried. She said 
that this situation hurt her heart. And I could see where this girl, you know, like when you're being bullied, you're being bullied and she's feeling helpless and she cried in that interview today. Tears were coming out of her eyes. You know, and in March, I saw the people who got out on the streets and I've never seen that before in, in West Burbies. And I've seen people very, very angry. And unfortunately, we've seen that young man that was killed. And that was as a result of what Mingo did. That boy get, in my view, that boy, those people would not have been in the road if our elections were not tampered. And so this is bringing out a lot of emotions in people. But more particularly, I want to say this to you. My mother always said to me, show me your friends, I'll tell you who you are. And the, the, gra the, 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 the most grievous uh, 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 shock for me is when I see people who I work with over the years, professionals, who is standing in defense of this assault on our democracy. People that I have a tremendous amount of respect for professionally and even personally. When I see this attack going on in our democracy and these people are standing with the anti-democratic forces and lying and perpetuating the lie and supporting the lie, you know, I wondered how we, we really have to dig deep to work together after this because it's really... It's really atrocious. They know that we know that they are lying. They know that we know that they are lying. And they're doing it over and over. Decent, decent professional Guyanese that are supporting the rigors, supporting the anti-democratic forces. And that is, a, that is going to be a real dilemma for us. How do we move forward afterwards? And that's why we need white people to help us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Captain, thank you so much. Nick, thank you. And we certainly look forward for a future, a very near future discussion with you two gentlemen. My co-host, you have been gracious and kind to be up so late with us. We know you have a packed day tomorrow in the office as well. And Josh, thank you. Kaito Radio technical team, thank you all so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming in, joining us in room 592 tonight. We certainly hope that it has been informative because here it's the no-spin zone. Here we unleash the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good night. And please remember, say a prayer for this beautiful country of ours. God bless Guyana. God bless you all. Goodbye now. You're listening to a special edition of Room 592 on Kaicho Radio. Kaicho Radio. Covering Guyana from coast to coast. Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Burbies 99.5 FM. Kaicho Radio.